Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new, thanks for stopping by. I'm Carol and I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. So today we have another canning video. Last time I did Rotel for you. Really delicious and great to have on your shelf. Many of you are asking for that. And today I'm gonna to be continuing with the same Mexican theme and I'm going to be showing you how to can up Chipotle beef for tacos. It is from the all new ball book. It has been on my radar for some time to do it. And I just have been putting it off. So I figured now would be the perfect time to do it. We have Cinco de Mayo coming up. So both the Rotel and this recipe are perfect for this time of year and get to get you ready for celebrating Cinco de Mayo. And if you've hung around my channel very much, you know I love Mexican food, so this is right up my alley. Many of you ask for meals in a jar, so this is gonna be another great one to have on your shelf to prepare a quick meal. Now this comes from this section, this recipe comes from this section in their book called Simple One Jar Meals. And the instructions for all of these recipes that they have in here are very simple. They are pressure canned, so you need to have a pressure canner. We're doing meat, it's low acid, so it must be pressure canned. You cannot water bath or steam can this. But the instructions are simple. You Step one is prepare your pressure canner. Step two is combine the prepared ingredients. They list everything you need and then you fill your jars and then you start the canning process. So it's four steps, really simple. Um, they include all the ingredients that you need in the correct amounts. I will tell you that the amount listed for your beef, you should weigh it after trimming it. You're gonna be using beef brisket, yum yum, right? So, um, and it says two pounds of beef brisket trimmed and cut into two inch chunks. So it's gonna be two pounds after you've trimmed it. If you weigh it before trimming it, you're not gonna have as much as what you think. The other thing that they're telling us that we need are two cups of sliced onions, and then we need some seasonings, we need some salt, some, they are saying dried oregano, I say dried Mexican oregano. You guys know how I feel about this if you've been around my channel very much. Mexican oregano and Mexican dishes, there is nothing that compares. Regular oregano does not do the dish justice, justice in my opinion. So use Rex Mexican oregano, that's what I'm gonna be using. They are also having us use some garlic cloves, some chopped fresh cilantro. I'm gonna use dried cilantro instead of fresh. Um, simply because I have a lot of dried cilantro on my shelf and I think dried cilantro holds up a little bit better than fresh but you can use either one and then uh, kind of the star of the show besides the brisket is going to be chilies in adobo um, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce is what it's called the amounts that they list are for two one quart jars or for um, four pint jars so because they've done it that way, it makes it really easy for you to figure out how many jars you want to can up and figure out how much, um, how much ingredients that you need. So I am going to be doing mine in pint jars and I'm hoping to get eight jars. So I'm going to double the amounts that they list here. So I have four pounds of brisket that I've trimmed. I'm doing four cups of onions, and then I'll go over the spices in a little bit. We also need some beef stock. So there, like I said, their instructions are to just mix your seasonings with your meat, and then you can raw pack in hot jars. I'm gonna do mine a little bit differently. I prefer par-cooked meat when I'm canning. I just think it cans better and it is prettier in the jar. But if you want to proceed using Ball's instructions, you can skip this first part I'm gonna show you, which is roasting your meat, par cooking it for a bit. And you can just follow along with what I do after I par cook the meat. But I'm gonna start with par cooking. So I have my oven on 375 degrees and I uh, went ahead and trimmed the extra fat off of my brisket and cut it into two inch chunks, which is the instruction from the ball recipe. So you wanna cut off as much fat as you can. Do wanna be careful not having too much fat when we're pressure canning or canning in general. You don't have to be super concerned about getting every bit of fat off. Actually, a little bit of fat 
lends itself gr to great flavor. So I've trimmed most of it, but there is still some left. I have between four and five pounds of meat in my roasting pan that I showed you I cut into two inch chunks. To that, I'm gonna go ahead and add my sliced onions. So I have the four cups of sliced onions. I think roasting them is, makes the flavor nice as well. So I'm just gonna roast those with my meat. And then I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper over the meat. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of seasoning. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop it into a preheated 375 degree oven and let it roast till it starts to get a little bit of color on it. Again, we don't wanna cook it through. We just want to par cook it and get, get it started. So I'm gonna let it roast for 30, 45 minutes or so, and then I'll bring you back and then we will proceed with canning it up. Okay guys, I par cooked my meat for about 30 minutes. About 15 minutes in, I went ahead and turned my meat over a little bit so it could start to brown on all sides evenly. Um, and you can tell that it's got some nice color to it now. So now what we need to do is we need to season our meat. Now, like I said before, Per Ball's instructions, you can totally do this without doing the par cooking step. So this is where you would start if you are packing with raw meat. So we're gonna, I'm gonna add, I know I added a little bit of salt when I um, roasted it in the oven, but I'm gonna go ahead and add two more teaspoons. I added about half the amount of salt that would be required for the amount of meat that I have. So I'm gonna add two more teaspoons. I'm going to add eight cloves of chopped garlic. That is half the amount needed for the meat that I have. So I'm gonna add two teaspoons of garlic powder. If you don't groove on garlic, you can leave the garlic cloves out and you don't have to use the garlic powder if you don't want to, but I, again, I'm doing half. I did, I'm doing half of the amount that I need in fresh garlic and then I'm doing the other half using garlic powder. Then I'm going to add about three teaspoons of dried cilantro. You can totally use fresh cilantro. If you're using fresh, the amount of fresh chopped cilantro you would need for the four pounds of meat I'm using would be one cup. And then we need a couple of teaspoons of Mexican oregano. That's about all I had left. I know, SOS, right? I need to get to the grocery store and replace that. So I have about two teaspoons of Mexican oregano and then this is my chilies in adobo that I finely chopped, which are the instructions per ball. So we're gonna go ahead and add those in. I also added about a tablespoon of the sauce that they're in. So now we just need to mix all that together. You could also add whatever other spices that you would like, whatever dried spices you might like to add. It's totally fine to add that as well. Okay guys, once you have all of your seasonings mixed in with your meat, we are all set for canning. I have my rack in my canner and I have three inches of simmering water uh, waiting for me. My jars are clean and I'm keeping them hot and I've just washed my lids and set them aside. So we are ready to go. Okay, so I'm starting with two hot jars and we are going to put our meat in to one inch headspace, our meat and our onions. And you wanna pack your jars fairly tight to one inch headspace. So when you get to your one inch headspace, you're going to ladle in hot stock. I'm using hot beef stock. And you wanna maintain the one inch headspace. And then you're going to take a debubbling tool, plastic butter knife, or a chopstick and remove your air bubbles and your head space may change when you do that. Now, one thing I've learned about siphoning is you don't want to overfill your jars. You really want to try really hard to have the correct head space. That's really important to eliminate siphoning. Okay, once you're happy with your headspace, you're going to take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar and thoroughly clean the rims of your jars. We don't want anything to interfere with a good seal, and I was kind of sloppy putting the meat in there. And then add your lids. 
and then add your bands to fingertip tight. In the canner they go. Okay guys, I got six pint jars. Now I never get what, or very rarely do I get exactly what Ball says that I should get. So my recommendation would be, and I even used a little extra meat because that usually happens to me. So I was trying to compensate for that. So I would count on, and I will put all this in the description box for you. I would count on having two and a half pounds of meat for every two quarts that you want to can up. So that's just my recommendation. So anyway, I've got six pint jars in my canner. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank up the heat and I'm gonna put my lid on. Oh, before we do that, I lied. Before we do that, you want to add a couple of tablespoons of vinegar to your water to keep your jars nice and clean during the canning process. So go ahead and add your lid. For the All-American canner, uh, you tighten your thumb screws two at a time, opposites. And you want your heat to be medium high to high. We want to uh, bring it up to where it starts venting. We want steam to be coming out of our vent, a steady stream of steam to be coming out of your vent for about 10 minutes. Okay guys, I've been venting for 10 minutes. That just means you have a steady stream of steam being released from your vent. You want that to happen for 10 minutes. So now it's time to apply our weight. I'm canning at 10 pounds of pressure. I'm below a thousand feet. Make sure you know your altitude and what is appropriate for you. So we're just gonna add our weight. If you are using a dial gauge canner, you are going to be canning at 11 PSI. So we're going to let it come up to pressure. Once we get there, the weight will start jiggling and we can start our processing time. If you are canning in quartz, you are going to be canning or processing for 90 minutes. If you are processing in pints, your time is 75 minutes. Okay guys, we are up to pressure so we can start our processing time. I'm gonna set my timer for 75 minutes since I'm processing in pints. Um, we do not want our weight rocking that vigorously throughout the canning process. So we want to slowly adjust our heat so that our weight rocks one to three, one to four times a minute. If you have a canner other than this one, make sure you know how often your weight should rock. Um, again, if you're using a dial gauge canner, you want to maintain 11 PSI. Okay guys, we are all done. Um, once my processing time was up, I turned my canner off, allowed it to return to zero pressure naturally, removed the weight, waited 10 minutes, removed the lid, and then waited 10 minutes more to give my jars really nice amount of time to cool. So. Here we are with our Chipotle uh, shredded beef taco mix. Doesn't that look good? So excited for this. Like I said, I've been wanting to try this for a while now and we finally did it just in time for Cinco de Mayo. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them for me in the comment section. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day, guys.